Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to make some brujol. So let's start with the mixture that I'm going to stick inside. I've got in here one cup of breadcrumbs, a quarter of a cup of Parmesan Reggiano, and a quarter of a cup of Pecorino Romano. I also have um, the leaves of 10 pieces of basil that have been finely shredded. I have a teaspoon of ground powdered garlic, a half a teaspoon of oregano, a little bit of pepper, no salt, and the zest of about a quarter of a lemon to help sort of brighten everything up. Additionally, to moisten it a little, I've got two tablespoons of olive oil. That's the mixture that it's going to get stuffed with. Now I have a, a flavorful mixture that I I made in um, a grinder and this is the leaves of about six basil leaves, um, the juice of a quarter of a lemon, the zest of a quarter of a lemon, a little bit of olive oil and a tiny bit of uh, breadcrumbs just to sort of help mix everything up and then I mix that and it's like a, a paste um, that I'm going to put on the inside in order to help extra, add, add extra flavor. I also have a bowl with some lemon juice and a little uh, brush. The other ingredients I'm going to use are uh, pepper, so it's a nice coarse ground pepper, some dry oregano, and some uh, garlic powder. Additionally, you need a little bit of flour for dusting, and I'll show you about that in a minute. So I've got my thin steak here, place it down on my board nice and flat. Try and get all the meat as close together as you can. And then most of the meat pounders, meat tenderizers, have two sides. They've got a coarse side and a fine side. I'm going to use both sides. So I'm going to start with the coarse side and just give it a nice hammer. opens up the meat. Now I'm going to sprinkle some pepper, oregano, and garlic powder on the meat. And now I'm going to use the fine side and pound again. And then I like to use the large side one more time. Now I'm going to take my lemon and put it on my brush and just give it a real light lemon brush. That's going to be the salt for the outside. And then now I'm going to take my large one again and now I'm going to brush this with a little bit of flour and then just sort of pat that in. And that's going to be the outside of the brujol. Now we're going to turn it over, trying to keep the integrity of the meat the best we can. And this is going to be the side that I'm going to stuff. Now I like to wash my hands really quick just because I'm going to lift those containers up again. So again, taking the large side first. just opens up the meat to receive the flavors and then again a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of oregano, and some garlic powder. And I'll pound with the small side. And again the large side. I'm going to take that paste mixture, I'm going to grab myself a, about, a, not, about a tablespoon of it, and you're going to smear it into the meat. And this is going to be, instead of adding salt to the meat, this, this is just going to add this really bright extra flavor. 
and then I'm going to take the coarse one again. Now I'm going to take this mixture and you only want a nice thin layer of it. Okay. And just a nice thin layer, um, leaving the edges just a little bit free. It's just a nice thin layer around the whole thing. And then now I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll this up lengthwise. Um, just my preference. Kind of tucking in these ends when you get close so nothing falls out. And now take a, this is baker's twine, and just roll it under and turn it over twice, and then move each side under, give it a real quick knot, and then one more, twisting it through and knotting it. There we go. And this is all ready to go. You can see I've got three other ones, I've got a fourth one we made. Okay? There we go. And then um, I will fry this off really quickly in a little bit of olive oil, brown it on both sides, then add whatever uh, sauce that you want. Nice red sauce made with some fresh tomatoes and some fresh basil and a little bit of uh, lemon zest and a little bit of lemon juice as your salt and some garlic and whatever other flavors. Um, I like anise, so I use a little bit of fennel in mine as well. It gives it the more Sicilian sort of a flavor. So I hope that helps you understand how to make brujol and you can make it at home and this way you can just eliminate me from the picture.